So we can hear you now. So, all right, we've okay. got your race winner, Nick Dahi, four-time winner in PRL Formula One competition. Uh, like we were talking, turn number one, you had a really good launch. You were able to get to the outside of the pole sitter maybe, not able to make the move, but behind you, carnage <laughs> ensued. What did, were you thinking when you heard the defending champion and the winningest driver in PRL competition history, Forza Alonso, when you saw those two boys crashing behind you, what went through your mind? Man, it was crazy because usually I get horrible starts, so I got a decent one, but uh, yeah, Forza Alonso, Mystic, he got one probably just as good as me, if not better. And uh, I had a look at uh, maybe, but you know, I was kind of cautious because I wasn't sure if he was going to come down on me like a... Uh, Pros Senna type ordeal. Right, <laughs> so right. <laughs> I just, I just kept it, uh, kept it calm, and then, yeah, behind me, I just saw cars blowing up. I think one like flew up in the air. Oh yeah, it was, um, <laughs> it was quite the crash, and, I, and that's what it looked like. It looked like uh, Alonso was trying to make the move to the outside there, and they made contact uh, with the with the Mercedes, and I think they were talking about maybe a little bit of lag, but uh, nonetheless, yeah. nonetheless, you were able. To have a pretty good race with maybe there uh, until the pits came along. He he dipped into the pits pretty quickly, uh, and you were able to make those tires last. And with his pit speeding penalty, there really was no competition uh, from that point on, other than the charging Mercedes from Dubsy there. So I mean, really, as far as strategy goes, it seemed like you were able to run your race pretty comfortably. Yeah, I just wanted to try to stay out in clean air and not battle. Like, I was kind of sticking with uh, maybe, but, you know, I could have maybe went for a bold overtake, but I figured, you know, let's try to build the gap on uh, Dubsy because he was on the uh, harder compound tire. Right. So I wanted to make the tires last, and then maybe he kind of threw, like, I didn't, I thought he was going to hit the pit barrier because he took a last <laughs> second dip into the pits, and I was like, I, I don't know. It was a good undercut. I think he definitely wanted to, like, you know, gain a couple seconds on me. Right, but uh, I wanted to right. I wanted to try to not be on the hards for too long, at the yeah, end. So yeah. it seemed to work out for you there, and I really the only time I was worried for you, it looked like, um, it looked like there they had a they had the first of the two virtual safety cars, um, uh, after. Uh, Dubsy came out of the pits and put on his hard tires. We saw that virtual safety car come out, uh, and it seemed like there, uh, there right before then, you had a little bit of an issue with the lap car. He got up to about two seconds uh, behind <laughs> you. Were, were you ever sweating there as he was seemingly closing in? Oh, definitely, because I know, like, uh, especially on fresh tires, he had to pace on me. But I think my tire wear was a little better. So I knew if I could just try to keep the gap and keep him out of DRS, you know, just until maybe like halfway through the stint, then our times would be pretty similar. And I think he must have made a mistake because I think he was catching, you know, maybe three tenths a lap there for a little bit. Right. I think he got the gap down to like four and a half seconds, but then all of a sudden it went up to like nine in the double left-hander. So I'm not sure what happened to him there. Maybe he made a mistake. Right. Or got caught up in something. Yeah, it definitely that got was, inter- I was sweating, man. <laughs> it definitely got interesting there a couple of times, but clearly the best car out there, the driver running the best race, uh, you did an excellent job, was able to avoid too many mistakes. Um, and now here you are, second race of the season with a victory, got the big 25 pointer. Um, your points leader is still going to be uh, the Mercedes of Dubsy, but you've had a couple of heavy hitters have. Uh, some problems here in race number two. How, I mean, how do you feel about your chances for the season now? I mean, I feel okay. I think I have, this track is one of my better tracks, but I never managed to win on it, so that feels good. But uh, I really do feel for Alonzo because uh, this, a similar thing happened to me and maybe last week with Majeko right. with the little lag spike, and his car just appeared in front, and we both broke our wing. So I feel for him because it happened to me last week. So I think the the key for the championship is don't get too close, make your overtakes count, and right. just pray for a clean race. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've done it twice in a row, clean races. You got your you got your fifth place uh, at Mexico, and now the top step of the podium in Japan. Nick Dahi, congratulations, uh, and good luck with the rest of the season, my friend. 
thank you, sir. It's it's been fun, and thanks for the commentary. I think everyone's enjoying it. So keep it up. Keep up it the is, good work. It is my pleasure. I tell you, it's a privilege to be able to call these races. Uh, we had the barn burner at Mexico, and then this one. You kind of stunk this one up, but that's what you want to do, right? <laughs> here and there here and there <laughs> <laughs> well thank you sir and congratulations once again all right thank you all right we'll see